my secret uh, as you film this. I live like five minutes away from the Charmed House. Wow. Um, and so I'm always in that neighborhood, like walking my dog. And it's really funny. Sometimes I'll drive by and I'll just park my car for a second and watch it, it, without fail, with it, like every 35, 45 seconds, a car pulls up, everyone gets out, they start dancing to the song, <laughs> take a couple selfies, and then they get back in the car and drive off. And like it happens within, like the whole the whole thing takes about a minute for them. Jerry S. Drew Fuller, give it up. Here's what we got. What's up, guys? Thank you for braving the cold and the rain. This is wild. Have a seat, the driest seat in the house. What's up, everyone? Thanks for having me. <laughs> you're, you're early. So it's, so it's great having you. Uh, first time in Pittsburgh? First time in Pittsburgh. I just got off a plane about 45 minutes ago, and they kind of whisked me right to here. So, Right off the airplane. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you all for being here for real. So grateful. Thanks. So let's just get started with some general stuff. We can ask the audience some questions. You started out as a model, as a teenager. How did that work into being an actor? No, you what? don't. <laughs> okay, you can do it. Here you go. You can have Okay, right, good. Here. Yeah, good, yeah, good. No, no, that's, I'll go blind. I want to look spontaneous. Yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> so what was the question? The question was, uh, you started out uh, as a model, as a teenager, and how was that, uh, how did you work your way into acting? How did that lead to acting? <laughs> um... I, I didn't know how one breaks into the business, and I don't know if there's any one right way. I just was like, oh, modeling can lead to commercial work, and yeah. then commercial work, hopefully you can get discovered by an agent and or whatever, just puts you in the right rooms and in the right okay. cities and kind of the right situations. And so I just, you know, it, I was fortunate enough where people wanted to pay me to... <laughs> to like model their clothes or whatever. And so it kind of just, it, it evolved naturally. You know, it started with that and then I got an agent very quickly thereafter. Do you remember your first audition and what that felt like? Uh, I do. From, it was, a, it was a, I actually booked my first audition. It was like a really bad horror film, like really bad. We're talking one of the worst movies maybe ever made. And I walked in and I booked this job and I didn't have, I had never gone to an acting class or anything. And I was like, oh, this is so easy. Like anyone can be an actor. Um, and then you see the movie and you go, oh, no, <laughs> it is bad. But uh, yeah, it was a, an interesting experience and a learning one for sure. Mm -hmm. And so I want to uh, talk about Charm. You joined in the fifth season. What were the challenges and benefits of joining a show that was already that successful? Well, so at the time, I had booked uh, the OC as well, mm -hmm. the pilot of the OC, and I was going to be a series regular on that. And then, but I pre charm there was two other WB shows before it turned into the CW that I had been on. And they were really, really good about finding, it was very family oriented at that mm -hmm. point where, hey, we like you, we like what you're doing, we're gonna find a new show for you because this show didn't work or your role in that show didn't work. And so ultimately I ended up booking both at the same time and I made a decision to go with the short, like the short bet, which was Charmed because Charmed is, you know, it, it's such a massive cult following and it had already been on and you didn't have to worry about, like when a new show comes out, the pilot episode, basically it's entirely up to the viewer in regards to if the show keeps going. So you never really know if it's going to be a hit or not. And I wasn't, I was going to be one of like 15 kids on the OC. And so, but I was going to be the main new guy on Charm. So for me, it, it was a no brainer. Now they killed me on Charmed a year later and the OC went on to be one of the biggest shows of that era. But, uh, if I had done that and not this, I wouldn't be here today and have the friends that I have with like, you know, Shannon, Holly, Brian, Rose, like these are some of my closest friends, so I'm so grateful. How familiar were you with the show when you uh, got into it? Not, uh, I mean, obviously, like everyone, like casual, of course, like you know, these three powerful women are the lead of this like kick-ass show about magic and 
and family, um, but I had never seen the show before I was on it. And I actually, uh, one of the things that, and I don't know if you guys had, you know, we had a podcast, House of Hallowell, that we were kind of doing a simultaneous, like, watching or rewatching of, and I had never seen a single episode of Charmed this whole time, and then recently I started watching it for the first time, and the show's awesome. I love it. <laughs> it's a great show. Yeah. What was your audition like? Do you know you were auditioning for Charmed, or did they just yeah, kind of mask no, it? Yeah, it no, was, it was because of that, of what I said earlier about I had already been on two CW shows mm -hmm. that it was more of like a meeting and go, hey, we're kind of writing this character. We think you'd be right for it. You know, I think it was like, you know, a page audition, but it was really more about energy, what I fit, vibe, did I bring what they were hopefully looking for with the cast or for the cast. And so... So uh, you were given a pretty decent background for the character role, right? Before the evening? No, we got, I knew nothing. Like, I know the big reveal was, you know, Chris is the, the son from the future. Spoiler work, if you guys didn't know that. Um, but, yeah, they, the, the truth is, is the writers had no idea. Originally, I was brought on to be a love interest for Paige, which was what I was told, which is really weird. And then instantly, kind of, like, the good thing about Charmed and a good thing about a lot of these shows that have already been you know, you were on season five, you're like, hey, we, let's just see how this goes. Let's see how they look on screen together. Let's see if they act well together. Yeah, yeah. And I instantly had a really good um, acting chemistry with Holly. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, well, what can we do? And then they found out Holly was pregnant in real life and like, oh, Chris can be from the future. And that's kind of how it ultimately evolved. Were you able to improv much? Because it looks so natural. Like a lot of the delivery is just... Um, Funny, because the timing is really well, I, natural. You know, hats off to the girls who are really good at that, and it's a, I definitely think it's a skill. But I, you know, especially because it was pretty early on in my career, I wanted to make sure that I was honoring the writers because, like, this is, this is their voice. And so I would try to stay as close to word perfect as possible. And mm -hmm. then if they were kind of riffing at the end, then I would kind of hop in on that. But for the most part, I tried to just... Because it just flows, just like, you know, like it's not written. It flows like it's yeah, the it character. Yeah, it flows, exactly. And that's kind of always been like an appeal for me as an actor, is I kind of wanted to make it seem like this is a conversation that we would be having if it was two people, mm -hmm. you know, across from each other from a dinner table. Just keep it really grounded in the work. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were in quite a few music videos. What's the atmosphere like, movie, TV, video, and how do you prep any differently? Um... I, it's all very much the same. It's kind of like you, you, you find out you get the job and then you do a little bit of work before as much as you possibly can. But on a music video, a lot of times it's like uh, you have to be em em emoting or emitting a lot of emotion, um, but you can't use words. So you just have to trust that there's like a lot of like the term is inner life. Like you've created this character, you've created this scenario. And, you know, like a lot of times in a music video, it's a guy longing for the girl or the girl longing for the guy and kind of like stolen glances from across the room from each other and so you know it's just it's 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 all make-believe mm -hmm. but it's still tightly scripted like uh, or is yeah, there room like for when you, so one of the things that i've been doing like because of like between the pandemic and then there's been multiple acting strikes and like the director strike like one of the things that i've had to do is you know to find work I started writing and directing music videos. Oh. And like you, you, there's a pretty s s big script that you kind of, you pass out to everyone and you kind of follow along with it, but it's much shorter. There's not like these yeah, long, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, four page takes. It's like, hey, we need this moment of you going over to the girl and giving her a kiss and sitting down at the table. It's, it's, it's pieced much like tighter. Mm -hmm. Are you involved in any of the editing on the music videos? Uh, like from a, directorial like oversight yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 yes but like you know there's incredible editors that i have that i'll just kick it to and like they know the script they know the story and i'll sit there and work with them to kind of find the best possible edit okay uh, i'd like to ask you about army wives real good long-running series how do you prepare any differently for something that's really a lot more serious um with army wives does anyone watch army wives in here or is this all charmed okay Cool. Uh, for you. The, the two. You too. Um, Army Wives was based off of, it's, a, it's based on a book, a mm -hmm. uh, true story 
about, it was called Under the Sabers, The Real Lives of Army Wives. And my character was a real character. So when you're playing someone who actually is living and breathing, you have to, it's a much different approach than, let's say, Chris on Charmed, who's magical and mythical, and you kind of make it up as you go along. But with that, you like, you try to interview the guy if you can. You try to learn about his life. You try to learn like his voice, what he sounds like, how he holds himself. How does he sit down? He doesn't sit like this is how Drew sits. Maybe the guy sits differently. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think when you, you have the opportunity, any and all like research you can do or depth you can get is for a character is great. So how do you actually research a living character? Well, I, you know, you read the, you read the book mm -hmm. that it's based on. Mm -hmm. You try to find interviews about, you know, who he was and why he did what he did or whatever the situation is. And yeah, it, it's just, it's piecing. It's like you become a kind of an investigator mm -hmm. a little bit. Like it's a private detective where you kind of get to, you find clues about who this person is, and then ultimately you kind of try to bring that to life. Do you find there's more pressure doing that than someone that's fictitious? Well, yeah, because you want to honor, you want to do everything you can to honor this person, and or at least his truth. Um, and I think there, yeah, you like you just you're held to a little bit of a higher standard because mm -hmm. you're portraying someone who is a actual person. Mm -hmm. Not that Chris wasn't an actual person in any of these other characters, but meaning like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to get to some questions from the audience. Just quickly, uh, what have you been working on now and any hints at any future projects? Um, well, the big thing that we did last year was the House of Hallowell podcast that unfortunately had to be shut down for a multitude of reasons that we can't quite talk about yet. It's okay. But I promise there are going to be some big kind of announcements coming very soon, and I think a lot of people were going to be very happy with the trajectory of that. But that was a, you know, that was a full-time job, kind of birthing that idea from scratch, mm -hmm. building up a fan base, and actually really kind of trying to give the fans something because outside of a reboot with the original cast, like how can we give you guys new information right. about a show that you've probably all seen 50 times? And so I thought a podcast was a really strong idea to kind of give an in-depth look oh, yeah. on something that maybe you, you guys didn't know before, like what they were thinking right before the scene. And so that was kind of like the big thing that happened in 2023. And um, again, hopefully we'll have some big announcement in the next coming weeks, I mm -hmm. pray, that we'll be able to share. Um, mm -hmm. But um, outside of that, we were on strike for the predominance of last year as well. <laughs> and the strike ended and it was a writer's strike, so nothing was being written. So right. production is slowly ramping up again. Oh, but in the meantime, like, you know, just auditioning and the grind, like everyone else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, questions from the audience? Let's have some. Guys, one at a time, please. Yes. One at a time, everyone calm down. Well, I have a question real quick. Sure. Um, you've been on a number of um, guest appearances, Longmire, The Rookie, NCIS. Is there a particular guest appearance that you really enjoy that you came away and like, I wish I could be on that show all the time? I mean, the truth is, is like, an out-of-work actor just wants to be acting, right? <laughs> like, and so any opportunity I get to go be on a show, I'm like in heaven. I think probably The Rookie or um, NCIS was like one of the more fun experiences because they both shot in Los Angeles. And I haven't, I don't think I've booked a job that shoots in my hometown since those jobs. And you know, having traveled to South Carolina for seven years or Vancouver for a couple years, like to be the luxury of being able to actually work in the city that you live, where your family is, where your dogs are, where your friends are, it, it, it's really nice. And so any job that shoots in LA, I get really excited about. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Quick question about Charmed. Why do you think it has such longevity? Why do you think it's still as fun to watch now as it was then? It just seemed like a timeless show. What That's about it with the characters, the writing, the chemistry? I think, it's the, I think it's a multitude of things. I don't think it's just about magic. I think it's about family. I think it's about um, being there for each other, standing up, good versus evil, uh, 
but really more than anything, I, the, the more I've kind of been ingrained into this world, it is family first and family's everything and having each other's backs and supporting each other and you're not always going to get along and not everything is always going to be easy. But when you have that support group, that foundation to fall back on, it kind of elevates and changes the way we, we live. And, the, like, and I, I, I think that resonates for a lot of people because there's so many metaphors and analogies that are happening with that show that I, I just think it's hyper relatable. And then at the same time, it's just fun. You know, in a world that is just so serious and we have so much going on, whether it's politically or, you know, all the civil unrest globally, just a little bit of a reprieve where you get to check out, have some fun, kick some bad guy's ass and like, you know, save the day. It's like, that's what people at the end of the day really... Do you have a favorite scene that you were in that was like, that is... Oh, I haven't watched anything that I'm in, so I don't know, but I'll say that I definitely have a couple favorite episodes as of... Yeah. The first two seasons, because that's all I've watched so far. It was definitely Hellfire is one. Um, I love uh, Dead Man Dating and Chick Flick, I think, are like the three that stand out. And for very different reasons. Like Hellfire, Shannon is just a goddess and a queen and my favorite and just fucking owns, owns every scene in the screen. And it's just sexy and powerful and inspiring. Dead Man Dating like pulls on all the heartstrings. Like there's like true love and you get really emotional about connection and loss. And then uh, Chick Flick is just fun. Like you can tell they're running around having a blast shooting that. So for those three, for those very specific reasons have kind of stood out to me. Excellent. Now we have a question right down here. Don't worry, he's got a microphone. He'll be he's coming your way. I was wondering if you had any that's a, like special memories from behind the scenes working on Charmed. Special memories from being on scene uh, in Charmed. Um, you know, it's interesting. I think my special memories have now come post when I was older and I've met the, like we've now met more as equals. Like when I came on the show, I was 21, 22. And like I was still really new and fresh. And, like, I was just trying to keep up and make sure that I didn't get fired. Versus now, like, we're all adults. And obviously, like, time is a great equalizer, as they say. And so to be able to meet them as equals and feel, like, to be able to travel the world. Like, we've gone places from Pittsburgh to Saudi Arabia to Tulsa, Oklahoma to San Diego. Um, it, it, we've traveled the world together and kind of building these memories outside of that. So for me, that's what stands out the most. Great. And we have some people just joining us. Welcome. Have a seat. What's you have up, a question? Guys? You have a question? Oh, okay. <laughs> just because we did start really early. Drew was just hanging around and they said we'd get, we'd get started early. But if you have a burning question... Now's your moment to shine. Guys, nothing's off limits. Let's just go there. Oh, there we go. I see you with that. As soon as you said that. Yeah, nothing's off limits. Say whatever you want. Oops. Uh, All right, here we go. It's an easy one. Uh, who is your biggest crush out of the three main girls? Oh, Shannon by far. <laughs> okay. And everyone gets mad. That's your aunt. What are you thinking? I'm not. <laughs> I'm just being straight up. It's also her birthday today, so everyone go online and make sure you wish her a happy birthday. Aw, yeah. You have a question? So I have a question. Um, you, you meet a lot of people at cons who have all kinds of passions, but outside of your work, what are your passions? Do you collect things? Your dogs, you mentioned? Yeah, you know? I, I love being... Uh, I love sports. I grew up doing sports. Like, I love surfing, and I play... So nerdy, it's so nerdy, but I play pickleball, which is basically like tennis and ping pong, had a baby, and I'm obsessed. Like, I'm playing in a pro tournament next week. Like, it's, I've had a lot of free time recently, and I spend a, most of it on the pickleball court. It's just so fun, and yeah, I just like being active. I go hiking with my dog, like, you know, five days a week, and we try to hit five miles up in the mountains, and just in spending time with my friends and my family. Like these are like things that I really am grateful that I'm able to do, um, you know, and I love, I still love movies. I, like I went to a movie last night at midnight um, before I got on a plane. Like I just, like I'm still 
as difficult as the industry can be, I, I'm still so in love with movie making and the magic of it all and being whisked away to a, you know, a different reality for two hours or, you know, if we're binging a show. It's just, it's so fun. Are there any current movies you really have taken a shine to? Uh, Dune was incredible. I think that's one of the greatest sci-fi like features I've seen in my lifetime. Uh, I saw Civil War last night. Alex Garland, he did um, Annihilation. He also did um, Ex Machina. Um, wow, that's a, it's a very, very challenging, difficult, powerful movie um, about what would happen if there was a civil war in today in America. Any other questions? Going once. Guys, this is it. What happens if I never come back and you're like, oh. See, there you go. I should have asked him what his favorite color is or whatever. I don't know. Well, you know, it's funny you mention that <laughs> because you're going to be headed back to your table to sign. These people have time to ruminate. There's a question right there. They Ayo. have time to ruminate their question and visit. Hang on. Hang on. We got a mic. So I saw you at Lexington Comic Con. And then I ended up listening to the, the podcast all the way home. And I ran into, like, a massive blizzard. Okay. <laughs> so you guys got me through that. But I remember you saying something about going to the Charmed House. Yes. And how everybody was around. Have you tried to get back to that? Yeah. I, well, I live... The, like, my secret, uh, as you film this, I live, like, five minutes away from the Charmed House. Wow. Um, and so I'm always in that neighborhood, like walking my dog. And it's really funny. Sometimes I'll drive by and I'll just park my car for a second and watch it, it without fail with it, like every 35, 45 seconds, a car pulls up, everyone gets out. They start dancing to the song, take a couple <laughs> selfies, and then they get back in the car and drive off. And like it happens within like the whole, the whole thing takes about a minute for them. And then they're like in, they're out. And I'm like, wow, these people have traveled all the way and they spend like one minute in front of the thing. And, but I feel bad for the people who actually live in that house. <laughs> like, this is a real home. This is someone's house. And everyone's just crashing it at all times in front, taking photos. Good question, though. Yeah, that's great. Oh, we have one on the far side. Oh, hey, man. Okay. He's working it. Do you have a favorite type of music? Yeah, well, I, I, and it's such a cop-out. I really do, do love all genres of music, and it's just kind of like, what is the mood? Like, if I'm working out or I'm, like, feeling like I'm going out, it's definitely more, like, pop and hip-hop. But I, one of the things that I'm constantly listening to in my car are movie soundtracks. I love movie soundtracks. I just think they're really epic and powerful, and they stay with you. Um, but, I mean, I'm... I'm down with pretty much anything. Like I'll, I'll country, but 80s pop. Give me. I love oldies, like real oldies. I was just schooled recently. Like apparently, 90s music is now considered oldies. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, oldies are oldies, like doo wop. Yeah. But apparently, no. Like <laughs> anything from the 90s or early aughts, like that's old. That's now considered. That's what the kids call oldies. And I'm like, oh, cool. Do you have any favorite soundtracks? Oh, the Interstellar soundtrack's really good. Um, Last of the Mohican soundtrack is great. That's, that's an all-timer. Um, I mean, Harry Potter's a classic. Mm -hmm. You can't really go wrong with that. Or, uh, yeah, anything really, that's true. Anything with, by John Williams is... And just guilty pleasure, if you ever heard the soundtrack to a movie called Sorcerer? No. It's really amazing. It's, okay. uh, it's uh, the film that um, the guy that did The Exorcist. Okay. Um, yeah, freaking. His next f his film after that was called Sorcerer. It's amazing. Roy Scheidner. It's based oh. on a movie, A Wages of Sin, a French movie. It's a phenomenal film. Sorcerer? The soundtrack is by Tangerine Dream. And it's all... Tangerine Dream, say no more. Say no more. There we go. I love Tangerine Dream. Okay, Sorcerer. And, and the story, real quick on the story on that soundtrack, William Friedkin did not shoot a, an inch of film till he heard their soundtrack. He shot it to their music. Wow. So if you could take a look at it, it's, a, it's an unbelievable film. Oh, I can't wait. Thank he says you. it's his perfect film. I'm going to watch that on my uh, flight home. Thank it's a you. Fave. Sorry, I, I have no, to. No, no, please. That. I, I'm, I'm so stoked. I love 
like any any hot tips you guys have for me, I'll be at my table and drop them. Let's do one more question. So we've been pretty charmed focused and uh, you and I had spoken at the table a little yes. earlier. Can you give us some uh, interesting feedback or stories about the Army Wives days? It was, I think a lot, uh, Army Wives was, in hindsight it was lightning in a bottle. I think we had something really special. I think at a time and a place we were giving a voice to uh, things that people don't really ever think about, which is like the servicemen and women who are fighting overseas, but what about all their loved ones who are at home? And at any given moment, they can you're constantly being moved to a different place. Like, hey, today we're in Texas, and you know, like, oh, I got papers. Now we're now in North Carolina, and what the kind of what they have to do every single day to support their significant other who's kind of fighting on the front lines to make sure that we can do things like we're doing right now. And I, I just believe that that's something that, not that we take it for granted, but we just don't ever think about it. It's just not something that anyone really ever thinks about. And so the fact that we were kind of capturing these unique stories, I think is really special and I was really grateful to be a part of it. And also it was really cool to live in Charleston. We shot that in Charleston, South Carolina. And it was like a, I mean, what a gorgeous city. If you guys ever have a chance to escape this rain and you want to do a little day trip down there, it's a little longer than a day trip, but um, it, it, was, it was a really special time in my life. And I wish I, you know, I wish I enjoyed it and appreciated it more than I like when I was in it as opposed to, and I think that's a, like, we all do that, right? Like in hindsight, you're like, oh man, God, what a gorgeous place to live and what a great job to have and what I wish if I had the knowledge and the kind of the gratitude that I have now, then how much more of an enriching of the experience it would have been. And I still loved it. And I had, a, I feel like I was seven years of my life, so... Well, thank you so much for showing Guys, up early. I really out. appreciate you all being here again in the rain. It's cold. <laughs> it's Friday. Listening to me ramble. Headed back to his table to sign once again. Hang out with him. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Drew Fuller. Source it. Source it. Thank you. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.